August 27th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 from the New Testament. For you yourselves know, brothers and sisters, about our coming to you. It has not proven to be purposeless. But although we suffered earlier and were mistreated in Philippi, as you know, we had the courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of much opposition. For the appeal we make does not come from error or impurity or with deceit, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the gospel, so we declare it, not to please people, but God, who examines our hearts. For we never appeared with flattering speech, as you know, nor with a pretext for greed, God is our witness, nor to seek glory from people, either from you or from others. Although we could have imposed our weight as apostles of Christ, instead we became little children among you, like a nursing mother caring for her own children. With such affection for you, we were happy to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own lives, because you had become dear to us. For you recall, brothers and sisters, our toil and drudgery. By working night and day so as not to impose a burden on any of you, we preach to you the gospel of God. You are witnesses, and so is God, as to how holy and righteous and blameless our conduct was towards you who believe. As you know, we treated each one of you as a father treats his own children, exhorting and encouraging you and insisting that you live in a way worthy of God, who calls you to his own kingdom and his glory. And so we too constantly thank God that when you receive God's message that you heard from us, you accepted it not as a human message, but as it truly is, God's message, which is at work among you who believe. For you became imitators, brothers and sisters, of God's churches in Christ Jesus that are in Judea, because you too suffered the same things from your own countrymen as they in fact did from the Jews, who killed both the Lord Jesus and the prophets and persecuted us severely. They are displeasing to God and are opposed to all people because they hinder us from speaking to the Gentiles, so that they may be saved. Thus they constantly fill up their measure of sins, but wrath has come upon them completely. For when we were separated from you, brothers and sisters, for a short time, in presence, not in affection, we became all the more fervent in our great desire to see you in person. For we wanted to come to you. I, Paul, in fact, tried again and again, but Satan thwarted us. For who is our hope or joy or crown to boast of before our Lord Jesus at his coming? Is it not, of course, you? For you are our glory and joy. God, today, let us truly be disciples that make disciples. We see Paul and and the other people who work with them constantly in relationships with the people who they've given the gospel to. Sometimes I think that (laughs) modern day Christians are kind of this uh, drive-by shooting of the gospel. We go out, we tell people the gospel, and then never to see them again. Yet throughout the whole Bible, you talk about relationships. And we see that very clearly in all of Paul's writings, how he was constantly working on relationships. And being a disciple to the world doesn't mean just going around telling people the gospel. It means working on a relationship. As I know, I don't like doing relationships. A lot of people don't like doing relationships. Relationships are messy. They're hard. They're painful. But they're also valuable and amazing and powerful and enriching. And it's also one of the best opportunities you have of sharing your faith. Um, Some of the relationships that I've had have been for over a decade before I was able to share my faith, before that trust came into that relationship and they believed me and respected me and more importantly saw you in my life working through all of those situations that they were willing to listen. So yeah, it's wonderful when you give us those opportunities where we just come in, we say the gospel and you had them prepped and ready to go and and they accepted you into their heart right then and there um, and started a relationship with you. But for the most part, most of our relationships, most of our discipleship type relationships are going to be that. They're going to take time. There's going to be hard spots. There's going to be really awesome spots. Um, But just like our relationship with you, we have to continually work at it. 
we have to pray for them, uh, for the non-believers in our life, for the new Christians in our life. We have to support them and encourage them. And what does that mean? Some of my discipleship relationships are online. So a lot of times that means instant messaging, uh, sometimes phone calls, sometimes emails. Um, other relationships that are closer can simply mean checking in at coffee once, or, once a week or a couple times a month, depending upon what that relationship means. And then sometimes the mature Christians, we need those relationships too, just as um, a point of contact for support, for encouragement, to keep us in line. <laughs> I tend to uh, get out of line kind of quickly and I have this amazing group of, of people who keep me in line. And then today I saw probably the most amazing reason for having these continuous ongoing supportive relationships like we see Paul talking about in his letter is my heart is just shattered by a situation that I've been put in the middle of <sighs> not not of my own doing at least not anymore and and I'm thrown right back in the midst of all of that and yet here I was today surrounded by my friends from the church I go to and, and they were praying for me and there was hugs and I know there'll be strength that will continue because of their prayers. Their encouragement meant so much to me as I kind of spiraled down into the situation and just got more and more defeated and frustrated and hurt and angry. And God, you just sent in these amazing relationships that some have been for a very long time. Some have been very short. And here they are in my Christian walk to encourage me, to strengthen me. Um, just like we're going to hear Paul talk about tomorrow, that he sent Timothy into them to do exactly that. He's sending Timothy into the Thessalonians to strengthen them with the gospel, to encourage them about their faith. God, I just thank you so much for the people in my life. I thank you for all the people who pray for me, who encourage me, who support me, who teach me, who disciple me and discipline me. <laughs> and who love me enough to do all of those things and go through some of the rough patches with me and share in the joy as well. God, I'm, I'm so excited that these are the incredible people that I get to spend eternity with, worshiping you and glorifying you in heaven. God, please, if there's anybody that I can pray for, that I can help through things, that I can provide encouragement for, please unveil them to me. Show them, put them in my path, allow them to feel comfortable enough to text me or email me or whatever that looks like in their world that, that makes sense in a communication sense. Allow me to have the right words that you want me to say to them, whether it's, it's words of comfort, prayer, um, that they're ready to hear the gospel, whatever it is, just allow my mouth to do whatever your will is in that relationship. Help strengthen my desire to want to be in relationships instead of <laughs> to constantly do things on my own. Today was amazing, just an amazing example of why those relationships are so incredibly important in pursuing your will for us in this world. God, I just can't thank you enough for all the blessings you've given me. In your son's name, I pray. Amen.